man is trying to create his own record. So he's trying to do a recreation. So he recreates, he forms two instead of one. Now you're split between the knowledge of good and evil. Because evil is the desire of man. And everything will be measured up under man's desires. So that's where the church came in, and the Roman Catholic Church, the understanding of man's desires. It said that the woman would desire her husband. In the scripture, after Eve, it says the curse of Eve would she would desire her husband. Or her husband was a farmer. So she would desire his tax. Because <laughs> farmer meant tax collector. Oh boy, does she not desire his tax. To date. Okay? Oh yeah, I reread that one. No, that's what it says. That's what it said there. You will desire your husband. Didn't say you will desire your man. It said you will desire your husband. A husband was a farmer. And a farmer was a tax collector. Because he collected more than he so why needed. Would, why would a woman desire a tax collector? Because she went beyond what it needed. She wanted something that didn't belong to her. She went to right, the right, knowledge right. of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Okay? But he wasn't a farmer at that but, time. But, yes he was. A husband? No, he got everything no, given no, to him. No, no, he got no, everything no, given don't to him. read he into what's there. Happened. That's what happened. She did what she did. He joined in. Yeah. And the curse after the situation happened led to God saying she was cursed, she will desire her husband. Mm. Follow the scripture, don't assume. Read it, see it, and you'll understand the pattern, the timing of what happened there. Adam knew, and that's why he was guilty. And because the surname is passed down through the father under the sin, that's why you're guilty until proven innocent in our society. Because you carry, if you carry the surname, you carry the guilt. The seed of the woman is under the Christian name because she did not know. You can tape this if you want. Mark, you probably should tape this. this probably no, I've been all... recording the last two minutes. Oh, great. Okay. The, the Christian name is already the seed of the woman. Just for us anyway. She was forgiven because she didn't know. So she wasn't condemned to death in the book of Genesis. Okay? We're talking about the beginning. And Jin comes from the evergreen, which is the tree of life. I hope you don't pine over this. Well, spruce up. <laughs> and maybe they ate from the pineapple on the tree of life, because the pineapple may have been the tree of life. We don't know. That's a pineapple. <laughs> I don't somebody, know. Is that somebody going to sleep in the So they, they, they all claim it was an <laughs> apple, right? They mm -hmm. all claim it was an apple. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was a pineapple. Because that must have been something so exotic looking that attracted her to want to eat that. There's no fruit that looks any different than a pineapple. That is the most exotic looking, strange looking fruit that man would have wanted to go after. So there's a very strong possibility it was a pineapple. Okay, anyways. Anyways. So, he did get pricked after. What you talking about, Willis? Yeah, I know. Anyways. Mark. <laughs> Well, that's Did you hear what them. he said? <laughs> okay, so what we're, what we're looking at here is understanding what happened in there at the beginning. If you understand the beginning, you will understand the revelation. But in the beginning, God gave the prophecy. It said they would put enmity between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. The serpent, the seed of the serpent was to draw out. It's those that draw out. Okay? Not inward, they draw out. Serpent meant to draw out. You have pen in there, you have sir in there, and you have T in there, which is title. And I'm not going to explain all this video to everybody on this one, because this is meant for those that are already on the somewhat of an educational understanding of sitting around on some of these discussions. But if you understand those, those words, you'll understand. Because an S is a snake word. And an S is half infinity because only the serpent could only offer man half infinity, which means half life. 
That's why the lawyers who are the devil's advocates only go out there on your behalf. They can't go on there in your hole because they don't have the hole. They have the half. Okay? So that's why the S is a very difficult word to explain. It's, it's depending on where it shows up in the alphabet on, on letters. But it's very unique that the word serpent shows up right with the letter E, like the word devil shows up with the second letter being E. Because E comes after S on the serpent, and D uh, has E show up right after it on devil. Okay? So that's not by chance. Those two letters are very important because they're both property. So you have serpent, which is B half estate. Okay? B half estate, head, which is R, P, which is, when you take the pen, it's usually you're taking over possession. So that's I door. Because there's a D attached to the upper part of the I. These are hieroglyphs, guys. They didn't tell you this, and I'm not going to go into how I know this, because you'll have to do your own research. But they're telling you in language, based on symbols, to tell you what it is. And the English language is the whole mess of all the confusion, which is the merger of everything all together under one language. It's got Hebrew, it's got Phoenician, it's got French, it's got German, it's got everything all mixed into it. And it's a debtor's language because it borrows from all these languages. So the English language is a debtor's language to begin with. Therefore, it owes its origin back to the pagans. Because the pagans are the origin of where it came from because it's not a pure language. The pure language being Hebrew, that is pure. It is what it is. Ancient Hebrew is different when we're talking about English. And then we try to transliterate English into the Hebrew language. And therefore, to do it, we, we write out letters. And these letters have a code. And if you don't know what the code means, you don't understand it. And if you understand the Hebrew language, you understand the Hebrew language is the DNA of the, the blood of man. So God is a DNA composite that actually shows the chromosomes, 46. No joke that the Vital Statistics Act, dealing with your birth record, is 46-1. Okay? That's not by chance. So God is in control. Man would like to think otherwise, but he's in control. So, hopefully you will understand this. It's probably 10 to 1 you will not understand this because you don't get it. Because that would be 46-1. 10 to 1. 4 and 6. Okay? There's codes going on that are way beyond people's thoughts. And this is where they lose it because they go, oh, they can't be, and I'm just... I'm looking for it. They say, oh, this guy's insane because he's looking for um, matches to what he wants to believe. No, that's not the case. It's actually what I believe is coming from already the matches that are there. Okay? So you have to, you have to take it down that level to understand what's going on. So when we're, when we're dealing with, uh, 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 say, for instance, the word, uh, we'll take the word nobody. This no is why we were going to take buddy. this. Of course, that's a big catchphrase for a guy who goes on TV saying his last name is Last Man. And he always goes, nobody. And I know his background in supposed uh, uh, claiming uh, genealogy. But uh, the, uh, the interesting thing, when they went looking for Christ after he was, after, uh, after he was executed, they, they placed him in the tomb. And he was placed in a tomb with no name. It was never used before. So he never had a name put on the tomb. And Joseph of Arimathea was part of the court that judged Jesus, but he never came forward to speak up for Jesus. He came too little too late. Go figure about that one. So there's the late. We always have our name as the late somebody. And they reverse your name. They put it in reversion and say it's the late someone. So, so if you're born John Smith, you'll be the late Smith, comma John in the obituary of the newspaper. Because you didn't come early, you came late. 
but the estate is still there in reversion which still maintains the graveyard and your plot and everything else that's going on. Because they plotted against Jesus from the beginning and you're in the plot at the end. And they will put you six feet under in a box as they did before they boxed you in right at the beginning. All those things by chance. Okay? And you can't be in a pen using a pen without being in a box. And you do everything with a pen. You can't break this code. That's what I try to tell people when they think they're going to play some, uh, you know, free man sovereign movement to go out with these guys been at this for thousands of years. They're going to squash you like a little bug because you will end up in the pen for sure or not an annihilated anyways, trying to uh, cause them any harm or duress. We have to understand that there's things going on. And I lost a lot of guys that used to associate around this because a lot of people got very upset with some of this information. And of course they said I was insane and possessed and why that's great, wonderful. I know I'm not and that's okay. They may think otherwise and that's wonderful. Um, but they can't put a they can't put an actual understanding to it because they're caught up in trying to work with something that's already in error and not trying to see what isn't in error. So they can't see any of this. They're not an observer looking in. And so uh, when we look at a word like the word nobody, well, it means no person. They're always looking for a person. When they went into the tomb where Jesus was, the Roman soldiers were there protecting that tomb because it was already thought that the Jewish followers of Jesus that were becoming converts to Christianity, they were no longer going to be Jews, they were going to be Christians. And they were there for the purpose in the future to bring in the Gentiles. They were going to basically, in the eyes of the ones who had already been kicked out of the covenant back in 586 when the, when the Babylonians destroyed the last <coughs> temple of the Jews, they were no longer going to be a covenant nation under God. So they, the only option they had was to run the people who were not covenanted with God, which were the Gentiles. So they were going to basically run their short-term existence, controlling the cattle, which is what they considered the Gentiles to be. Goyim, cattle. That is a Zionist teaching, and they know 100% what they're doing. Anybody watching this film knows what I'm saying if they're a Zionist, because they've been taught this from birth. Therefore, everybody is a Gentile, and they're still a Jew, even though they couldn't prove they're a Jew because all their records have not been provided for them to prove their Jewish ancestry. The only true Jews are those that are of the elect of God that are under the seed of Abraham, who know where the Ark of the Covenant is, and know where the actual archive records are. And that's not the Spielbergs, the Goldbergs, the Weinbergs, and all the other guys, the Fines, and all these Jewish uh, code names that are really nothing more than a Gentile money trading name. Whether it's Rothschild or anything else, they're all in there. There's nothing than Jewish trading names for mingling in as a hybrid anyways to create what they believe to be the money changing in the temple. And God sent his son to make sure they didn't money change in the temple anymore. So God sent him to kick everybody out of to kick those guys out of their out of the temple because they didn't belong in the temple anymore because they had no covenant with the true God after their last king was destroyed along with their temple in 586. So they joined the pagan Babylonians. When they joined the pagan Babylonians, they went into the darkness. And therefore, at that stage. They had to create something that was going to be a surety or a tracking name to run the people who didn't understand the law. So they had to find out what the guys on the dark side were doing. Of course, they were into witchcraft, spelling, uh, paganism, warlocks, witchcraft. Which craft would you be involved in? What art would you be learning? So therefore, they got in they created an occupational name, which is an occupational surety name. And that eventually got into the Roman Empire. And the Romans were great at fiction, because their whole system was based on illegal fiction. Therefore, everybody believed that they were going to be in the power of Caesar, though they would all share it amongst each other. Therefore, you were guilty. It was a great way for Caesar to collect taxes, 
Because Caesar, when he registered the world, would register everybody who believed in this concept. And therefore, how do I track you? I've got to track you on something that is not inalienable. I'm going to track you on something that's alienable. So when he collected everybody up, he collected them up based on their, uh, their place where they were born. So if you were Joseph of Arimathea, you'd be Joseph of Arimathea. If you were a Mary Magdalene, you'd be Mary of Magdalene. That meant that was the tracker name for a tax rendering on you. And if you use that to sell yourself for hire, which is prostitution, not charity, which is what Jesus was about. He's about charity and love, because love and charity are synonymous. The idea of selling yourself for hire led down to this tracker name. So it had a false surety created by Satan, the father of the lie. Therefore, your father on your carnal end would register a name that would track you for carnal, short-term existence. And that's all that was rendered on to Caesar. Render on to Caesar what is Caesar's and God what is God's. But this, the given name is not transferable because it's Christ's intellectual property. It's preferred. It is a present, a gift. It was pre-sent and you got it based on the fact that your energy could only come from God anyways. So you could think all you want that you gave your child your own thought or, or imagination, but you didn't, because that belonged to God. But if you wanted to go down the path of selling yourself for labor, that came into the I Magi nation, which belonged to the Persians, the Magi, the pagans. And therefore, that made you the prostitute. And if you were going to sell yourself for money, instead of give yourself for love, that was the tracker name that was going to be involved. But when you join the two together, you've got an inalienable non-transferable, belonging to God name, and then you have a God-given name attached to a surname, which was a Gentile name who had no covenant with the true God. Christ fulfilled the law because he said you had to give yourself charitably because he gave him himself charitably. He did not sell himself, even though the Jews sold him for 30 pieces of silver and called that blood money. <coughs> even they threw it out of the temple. And then they bought the field of blood, the potter's field, the clay, because a potter made clay, was earthenware. Everything came from the earth, and Adam's condemnation was from dust you are to dust you will return. So whenever you're returning anything to do with the earth, you're returning it back to those that have made their claim on the earth. Those that claim heaven are in their spiritual side, and therefore are untouchable, separate jurisdiction. But you cannot be both sides. You cannot be of heaven and of earth. Therefore, we are the soul. But if you consent to place yourself beside that surname, that Gentile name with no covenant, you are actually completely consenting to do something that even the law does not recognize as capable of being done. Because under law, no, no one, no individual. And when I say individual, individual is the given name that's bestowed upon you as a gift. Can bestow or transfer his name, his given name, onto any person, any trust, or any corporation. But he may try. And if he does that, he would be energizing something that's not true. That's called a legal fiction, a legal lie. And the minute that you attach to that debtor name that belongs to what it is, you will pay rent. There's no way around it. You are the apparent authority over that. And therefore, you will look after it. And that is how the debt game works in our society. But if you don't see this, you're going to be very mixed up very confused, and confused means merger in law. It means merging two things that don't belong. But, you know, God is still ordained, and has ordained the powers, because Christ died for you. And there's no way they could join those two together, without your lack of understanding. You do it, don't blame the government. 
The government has set it in reversion. So they have a set off. They can't have the two together. It was a little bit of a set up when you were framed on your original birth record. But they set off. One was acquitted, one was accused. So when you take the two together as well, we operate, well, that's because we want to be in charge. Well, you can't be in charge and God's in charge and God has placed the higher powers in charge. Therefore, you are a beneficiary under that. You cannot run the estate. You cannot operate your own estate as being a son. And the problem with the prodigal son is he wants to go around and drive because prodigal means to drive. So if you want to go and drive your own estate, well, you'll find out. You'll get a driver's license because you'll be uh, hypothecating and making a derivative off of the reversionary estate of the wallet size birth record. And you had no authority to do that. Just because you do it doesn't mean it's right. You did it because the government is still in charge of that reversionary estate under that. We know it's not the heavenly estate as of yet because we know we haven't reached heaven. Christ hasn't come yet. So yes, it would make sense it's a counterfeit token of value. Of course it'd be a counterfeit token of value. How could it be otherwise? Because we haven't reached the real arrangement. How could everything that's de facto against God, managing things until Christ comes, be anything other than a counterfeit of what it's going to be? But in the meantime, your reversionary estate is reversed to what it is, what you think it is the other way. So John Smith is really Smith John. And under laws of punctuation, you can't have a comma, a period, a semicolon, or anything, or, a, or any other punctuation marks in a document under a, a judge to read. So under laws of punctuation, they have to remove all that. And they're not doing anything wrong, so when you go to the court, you'll notice on the docket, the docket already reads, Smith, comma, John, name of the defendant, but that guy has already got a certificate, because he's already been adjudged once. He's, his state's already in reversion, because he's already been born into sin. And therefore, his, his whole sin estate has already been paid for. But if you don't want to abide by that to allow the government to be the signing authority for that name, because you get a certificate for that. There's nothing to actually defend, but you walk into the court as John Smith versus Smith John on the docket. Well, then you've taken it over. Now you're becoming the accused because you most likely haven't brought in the evidence into the court anyways to prove that you've got a certificate of, in, of basically indemnification, which means you're not... You're already uh, completely paid for. But you walk in stating that you're John Smith. Well, the court only sees you as the guy taking the hit for that. Because John Smith, is he the agent or is he the accused? Most people walk in that John Smith is the accused. Well, if John Smith takes over the estate of Smith John, he's a counterfeiter to begin with. He's impersonating that dead entity because Christians are civilly dead in the world of man. They're no part of the world. The scripture said, be still and know that I am Lord. You have to read the scriptures to back this up. We'll do another video to get you right into Isaiah and other scriptures that deal with this. But if you don't understand this, you don't see this, don't blame the guy who's just saying it. You do your own due diligence. Don't let me stand in the way of your success. Because I find that a lot of these movements that are out there are all trying to play this game that they're God. And that they know how they're going to go and outwit people that have been trained in this system for thousands of years on how to take out the ignorant, the stupid, and the uneducated. And they're so good at what they do, they educate the stupid and the uneducated through their uneducated system of public education. So that they know that you're going to only understand what they're giving you. Therefore, you'll be educated through television, which is television. They're not, they're, you're not telling them, they're telling you. And therefore, you'll absorb in all the wrong information. But there's nothing in scripture, nothing in man's beginning, that ever told him he had to absorb in from just what was being thrown at him. Do your own due diligence and you'll find out. Then you can blame yourself. Don't blame God. Don't blame the government. 
They're playing a wonderful opportunity for people to make a choice one way or the other. But the idea of actually putting the blame on, you will be lame. You will be like Cain with a lean. Because you'll have a lean on you. That's leanable. That's what your occupation or your war name is against God. You're not peaceful. Christ came to save you from war. He was representing love and charity. And so it is very hard in the world we live in to talk to people, no matter what they're involved in, to say, well, I'm involved with the trade of, I'm a professional lawyer. I'm a professional doctor. I'm a professional uh, carpenter. But they'll say, that's my trade. Well, the word trade means traitor. It comes from traitor, which means defector, treasonous. You didn't want to have God as your surety. You were going to go and work your own occupation to pay your way. Well, Christ was the way. That's why the Christian movement was even labeled by the Romans as the way. And a, the way is an easement, an allowance to allow anybody to walk. By chance, it happens in a road allowance, which is 66 feet. 33 feet on one side and 33 feet on the other. I'd be amazed to find the spot where Christ was executed, to find there may not have been 33 feet in between the two, in between Christ being in the middle, even though Christ wasn't a middleman. He wasn't a broker. He was one. He was at one with the Lord. His Father, he came to do the will of the Father. So, if we don't look at the overall code that's there, which is C, absolute door property or estate. That's what those words stand, those letters stand for. You won't understand what's going on. So I'd be talking to you until I'm blue in the face. And we have this unfortunate, unnatural instinct to debate. I call that master debaters. We want to jerk our own chain to prove otherwise which is selfish instead of give fish. And we want to basically prove ourselves, but we don't really have anything of substance to back it up. Well, it's just going back to stroking the pen. So your, your spirit, your substance, is different than form. They informed on Jesus. But the spirit and the substance is what Jesus gave up at the end. He gave up the ghost. He gave up the spirit. Man's created a fiction, a ghost, by joining the two together. But it's not real. It's his own elaborate scheme, along with Satan, his main father of the lie, because he'd rather believe him than believe in God, the Father. And man's whole journey from Genesis to Revelation is about men who were walked with the true God and those that walked with fiction or a lie. You can continue to walk with the lie, but you will end up lying down at the end with the lie. Because it's destined to death. The wages sin pays is death. So if you're going to be part of the sin, you'll be prostituting yourself for wages. And that means you're gambling. And our whole system is based on insurance. You being in surety, not assured. Christ assured you. And that's not transferable to any insurance policy. So hopefully you'll understand the, uh, the direction on this. And if we went back to the word nobody, which was quite a word, uh, they went back to the tomb after the Romans were protecting the Roman soldiers and they didn't find any body in there. Christ had already arisen. And of course, the disciples of Christ went out to spread the good news, the gospel, that the Lord had risen, and he was now their father, and that their will and their estate was with him. Therefore, they were all children, daughters, and sons under God, under the Father. And that's why Christ's name was raised above all principality power, above all names that have ever been named, above every family that's ever been named, according to Philippians. Which would indicate the fact that it would be above even the surname. 
So nobody, no person, no one. That's what nobody means. Well, of course, they found nobody in there. Well, it would be very indicative, the fact is, that you were already purchased by Christ. So there would be nobody, when you were born, accused in any cell or arrested. It's an illusion. There is nobody there. So they issued a birth certificate to show that there is nobody in there. They got a nobody. It just is an ambiguous name that says name with the last name comma, what appears to be the last name comma, first name or middle name. That's a nobody because it's ambiguous. You can't define who it is. It's a nobody. That's on the docket. And then they create an illusionary attorney. Well, don't blame your attorneys for being involved in this. Okay? Because they're involved in the idea of denying the fact that Christ is the remedy. Because you wouldn't need a priest or a lawyer to defend anything if you believed in the remedy of Christ. And therefore you wouldn't be part of it. You wouldn't be signing up or enlisted in this. So, uh, if you take down a breakdown of the word nobody, it's a pretty simple, uh, you have search, balance. B, balance, door, surrender. You think about those combination of those words all together, you understand what a nobody is. So don't try to be a somebody, try to be a nobody. Because if you're trying to be the somebody, you'll be the sum of what they're looking for. And that means you'll be claiming you're the surety of it because you may think that you're actually a somebody. Uh, scripture actually stated in Galatians, uh, it said, if a man thinketh he is something when he is no thing, he deceiveth his mind. And you may be the thing they're looking for. And if you make yourself the thing of Satan, you will be something. But you will actually really be no thing. But you will actually be the one being taken in a security against something that has no backing. And there's nothing backing their system. There's nothing backing the money. Because it's completely an illusion. Everything was paid for. God is not in debt, nor could any country be in debt. That is an illusion of those that work against Christ, those that run a satanic world. So they're going to reverse in the future the idea of the NWO, which is new. They're going to have the new world order, and order means priesthood. They're going to be worse than the priests that were there before under paganism. They're now going to be the OW, they're reversing the OWNs, which is those that all think they own something. And there's going to be a, calamic, uh, a cataclysmic disaster in the economic system of man uh, where people will be actually understanding that they will be uh, a day's wage for a loaf of bread. They will have nothing. Their money will be worthless and be throwing it in the streets because it will become illegal. And they will not be able to buy and sell without the mark of the beast. <coughs> and those that don't know the law are definitely from the East, because they will be East. They will be a beast. And they will die like one, as Adam's curse was, because they're carrying the defector name, the surname, which are those without a covenant with the true God. The Christian name was given to everybody. It doesn't matter if they're Hindu, Mohammedan, uh, whatever they think they may be, their given name was a gift, and it's on the record. And the A.D. calendar marked a Christian birth event, a God event. You may be involved in a recreation, because they always send you out for recreation under your surname. But that's a recreation, not a creation. Your creation happened because God knew you were before the foundation of the world, so your given name is beforehand, and it's there, and it's a present. It was pre-sent for you. But if you don't see this, you won't be able to walk forward, because that means you're for ward which means you're already in custody, in protective custody, as a Christian. I call it the witness protection program. A witness for Christ, which is spoken of in Scripture. That you will be witnesses of Christ, which is spoke of, he spoke in himself. He said, you will be witnesses of me from Judea to the most distant part of the earth. This is going to happen. There will be a great multitude that will realize this. And you have a God-given name which is superior and is still recognized for the time being. It may not be recognized in the future. But right now it is. And you have the opportunity to come forward as heirs according to Galatians. Don't be coming forward as an heir -er. 
because the surname is an error, not an heir. And Satan is a master deceiver. And he was debating, and he brought in a democracy, a demonocracy, at the last moment of the dying world, the worst type of government that has ever existed in the history of mankind, with the most amount of selfish behavior. Strangely enough, though, a military government called a stratocracy is involved in this mixed war that controls those who believe they have a democracy, which they run through this sin program, which is to control those that are sinners who would like to have their private gain to believe that they're involved in controlling their own lives, to be in charge. God is in charge, therefore the government's in charge, you're not in charge. When you start to go down the path of people such as free men and think you're in charge, you are going to find out you're going to get electrocuted. Because the only ones who can get charged are those that think they're in charge. I'm in custody already. I'm already in ward. Christ was taken into custody. You, he was innocent. And the blood money is upon those that run the system. And therefore, they will be handling their own damage and their own uh, accusation and their own uh, idea of what they accuse you to be. That is their debt, not your debt. But if you sign for the debt, then you will be the debtor. How will you communicate? That's up to your faith. That's something you must do. That's not something I can do for you. That's something that has already been provided as a gift. And a beneficiary, someone involved in a trust, would speak to those in trust. Those that understand this will, will uh, gain the knowledge to move forward on this, but certainly based on the fact that they would understand that most of the documents they ever filled out have to do with the idea of placing by consent something that does not belong, unequally yoked with unbelievers. Be ye separate, says Scripture. Well, be ye separate is not to be merged. And the fact that God gave you a bestowed name that cannot be transferred to a corporation, a person, or a trust, tells you that you are exempt already. That's called a constitutional exemption. You did not place the name overhead. That was done ahead of time. You did not register the name, and they cannot register God's property because God doesn't need them to register his property. It's exempt. It's no part of their world. So... The, the concern what happens is, what are we going to do at that moment? How are we going to eat? How are we going to live? Well, that's the next journey. That's basically understanding what we just talked about and where you're going to go from there. But if you don't understand anything we just said before this, then you know pretty much I might as well have been uh, you know, spinning my wheels, speaking to a wall, which generally happens when people build a barrier when they don't want to see. Most people don't realize the word film itself, which is what we run our whole society on, even when we understand this video is still somewhat in a film uh, understanding. Film means foreskin. And the Gentiles were noted to have a foreskin. Therefore, they did not see, they were not part of a covenanted nation that were the head. The rest would be the tail. And you cannot, only the Christian name is not entailed. So if you're using the surname, that's a Gentile name, which means it's entailed. And those running that system are running the money and running the debt that's only you're consenting to because of your lack of wanting to go down a path of Christianity, which is based on morals, common law, and equity, which protects Christianity. And that's why Jesus did not come to destroy the law, he came to fulfill it. So Christianity is still protected under the common law, which is the law. Because it covers all the existence of man's laws over the ages. Things written and things unwritten. And Jesus never signed anything. Which should tell you something. If he didn't need to sign anything, why are you? But when you take over signatory role, you are the surety. And therefore God is not surety anymore. So do not blame the government or God for your own ego and stupidity getting caught into that game.
That's when you violated the trust and you caused antitrust. You were given certificates even from the time if no child had ever participated, they would add government certificates that had signatures already placed on them. Either they're good or they're not good. If they're not good, well then we're going to find out there's going to be a major shorting out of a counterfeit stock or a token of value. Because the signing authorities on those token of values are the certifiers for the name, not you. How could you certify it? If you take over trying to certify it, then you will have to pay the price, which makes you bearing the cross. It's an interesting comment that Matthew Henry uh, made about cutting off the entail. Can you speak about that? Well, when it, there's, a, there's an excerpt of Matthew Henry's commentary, I don't have it in front of me, but when he was talking about the, the time of uh, Jesus through the trial with Pontius Pilate, it was dealing with the fact that Pontius had washed his hands clean of the sin of, of actually uh, executing an innocent man. Uh, but, uh, of course, he couldn't walk away from that because even though he thought he was doing that, he had no right to do that. And, in fact, the clean hands doctrine came from the Jews, not from the Romans, which most people don't know. That doctrine did not originate with the Roman Empire. The, uh, the leading end of that uh, was that... Uh, he, he made a comment, it was just a unique comment out of that whole commentary on the last moments of Christ before uh, he was actually executed on the cross, was the fact that he said, if those that are actually of the seed of Abraham cut off the entail, the promise comes back to them. The promise is only under the seed of the woman not under the seed of the serpent. You will never get relief under the, the Gentile surname. When you join those two things together, it is just you being a broker. You're making a, a spread between good and evil, and that market's going to crash. It's gone as far as it's going to go, and the economic crisis is about to happen. You have no debt on your Christian name. It's not even transferable to contain debt. But if you attach it to something that has debt, you do it based on your own volition, your own signing, your own hand. You're actually signing your own execution. You're creating your own uh, debtor name. And there is no gun that was ever placed at your head to ever do that. It's because you didn't know otherwise. Now that you know otherwise, you would understand that you could never do the two or put the two together. So the question is, where does the journey go from there? What would you do? Well, this is where you need to sit, meditate, and find out. Research, study. What would I do only with my Christian name? What would I do? Well... We'll get into that in another video. We're not going to do it on this. I think we've got enough to carry, keep you loaded for a long time in your brain, in your brain on this uh, information. And so uh, uh, the, uh, the concern here is whether you've absorbed what we've already given you and then take it to the next step. And we know there's a lot of people out there that are trying to play both worlds. So you'll see a number of uh, people trying to go against this. That's fine. There's no problem. I couldn't stop that. I know we're outnumbered anyways. Uh, the stupid definitely outnumber the good. And, uh, uh, and as I say to them, as I've always said, you know, it appears they've got their success, then there's no concern. Don't let me stand in the way of your success. So if you think you know how to do this the other way, continue doing it. I see our world in trillions of dollars of debt and a lot of super stupid. There's even people that think they have trillion or have millions and billions of dollars of digital money that they don't even know where it comes from. They see it in an account, they see it in investments, and they actually think it's real. But they couldn't tell you what backs it up, what's there. And just remember that our whole system right now is based on power. And the first thing that people do when they get money, or the control of the money, they go to the next level, which is the tier level of power. So those running the power grid could easily just pull the plug. If they pulled the plug, there wouldn't be a man, woman, or child from poor to super wealthy that would not be at their beck and call. 
because they would be the guys controlling what's going to go on. Your Christian name is off the grid already. You don't need hydro from them. But if you want to be part of those that are running an evil power grid, running the line, the credit line that you don't need because all, all power is already in that Christian name, but if you don't walk it, don't believe it, it will not exist and you will not be able to communicate in it. And you will not get relief by playing a double agent. You can't put the two together. That's neither hot nor cold. You will be spit out of Christ as if you were just nothing more than lukewarm. Of no value to him. Spoken of in scripture. So uh, it's one side or the other. Which side are you on? Are you going to atone and be at one? Well, Christ already atoned for your sins. You don't need one. You only need one. You do not need two. So, uh, anyways, uh, we hope that the uh, future videos will uh, bring more clarity. We'll go more into detail on scriptures. Uh, I, I don't get into scriptures immediately on a lot of these videos. Uh, because uh, at first you have to kind of understand what's going on first in the... Uh, Many times when I'm speaking to people, they may have had somewhat of a surface understanding of the Bible if they're coming from a biblical level. Then we can bring them into the detail to bring them down that. And that's the second video. And we want to break these down into many videos because when we start getting into Scripture, I could spend 30 minutes on one Scripture. Which, te which tells you there's a lot of substance in that one Scripture. Right down to where it's found just for our own ability. Where we see Scriptures that are... Uh, uh, there for a reason, they'll even, uh, it's not by chance that it's, uh, the Godhead is in John 1 of 1, or John 1 verse 1. It's not by chance, it's been put like that for us. Everything's been put in verses for us to see it, because we wouldn't be able to break it down as quickly, because we don't have the ability of the minds, and it was not by chance that the King James Bible was put in place for that reason. So we could go to that to find out. Because it was easier for us to break it down because our minds are not the same as the as people in the past. And God took into account what probably was going to be coming, which is polluted air, polluted water. Our brains are not functioning at the level they were before. And as and if you're caught within the poison of the world, and then basically trying to understand this information, you may go through a little bit of anxiety and uh, mind... Uh, uh, you know, mind bend on this uh, until you uh, until you actually are able to absorb what's going on because truth is stranger than fiction. Okay.